I try to keep my politics to my politics, <laughs> to my <laughs> Facebook page and stuff, because I think it's a bit more, um, it allows me, on my personal page that is, it allows me to be a bit more upfront. And I usually don't push it too much. I just, I just try to give people the, you know, the links to videos, information, blogs, news items that are different to what everybody else is saying. Not, not to be a contrarian, but to actually say, look, here's something else you got to think about. And I think that's got to do with me being, um, you know, just being a teacher. I think it's it's my years of being in youth work, and I think, you know, I, you know, I, I can. If you look at my youth work, it's six years, right? It's, it's a total of six years, but. If I really have to think about it, I've actually probably spent a decade in youth work in different capacities. You see, a lot of the time, it's, youth work isn't just youth work. It's like, you know, it's it's not when you, it's like when you show up at that time and there's a group and you're one-to-one -one speaking with people, but it's actually when you actually spend time with people and you're like with young kids and your stuff and you're, you're there, you know, in that, in that, moment or you're not there in that moment you're somewhere sitting in a car and you're talking to them you're taking them aside and saying hey are you okay um is there something i can do what are you you know what's going on with you and i think a lot of people don't realize this part of my um you know part of my past because well i understand this part of my past where i've been you know involved in like 12 year olds like i used to like um i used to be uh every friday i used to like um I used to teach, um, I used to have a youth group for Sally Army, and I didn't like it, I used to, I, I, it was part of my job, job description, but it wasn't, and I, I was always, I always struggled with it, like 10 to 12 year olds, but the kids loved me, that's the weird thing, the kids put me on edge all the time, but they loved me, and it was the weirdest thing, it was myself and a female counterpart, um, who, you know, would be doing it with me, and um i don't remember she um, i was i was getting i was a part-time worker actual paid work for an entire year right usually my my whole thing was that i'd work with um uh, 13 and overs and like teenagers right we go 13 and overs so getting stuck with 10 and 12s was really hard on me um mentally because i just got married and i wasn't you know i was i was now working at a lower income um not to do with you know, the Sally Army or anything, just the fact that that's what it would come down to because I was a single, you know, I'd gone, I'd just been fired, basically, or made redundant uh, six months earlier after getting ma married, right? Within months of being married, I was made redundant. And it was the, the saddest things and the hardest things. And here's something like, let's talk about that, right? Let's talk about that. So if, you, if you're a guy, a man in a marriage, right? Uh, you know, you're the husband. And you have been the sole breadwinner, and you've been, you, you know, you've got, you've been working for years, and you've been, you know, I, I, at that point, I think I was working for about five, three years at this job, right? Three whole entire years of this job that I've given everything for, and this is my hard lesson that I learned, and as a, I think as a twenty-seven year old, yeah, I think I was twenty-seven. At twenty-seven. I learned so from 24 to 27 years old this three years I'd given everything and I mean everything because I had opportunity to leave that place yet I stuck with it because I like my bosses and that was a cool thing and I like the job uh, you know I usually walk to it I, then there was a time when I bike to it and we moved to another place further away and so that was the, like the last six months of the job, I, you know, where I do like bike to it. I work like every second Saturday, four hours every second Saturday. I hated doing that, you know, but it was part of my, you know, part of my contract. And so before I forget, so when I was, you know, so I was in a, I got married, right? And before I got married, I went to my boss, I said, I'm getting engaged, I'm going to be married within a few months, so I need a raise. And it was hard, I just, I, but I was like, I was shaking, I was like, 
because I don't like confrontation. I don't mind it anymore because I'm used to it now and I've hardened myself to it. You know, hardened my, um, my gut to it. I, I still don't like it. I, I think it's a horrible thing to do when you have to conf confrontate, uh, you know, confront someone uh, about anything. Even if they're right or wrong, it's still the same thing, right? I just don't like it. But so I had to, I went up to my boss and I said, hey, I'm getting married in a few months. Uh, it's just been sorted now. And um, $10 ain't cutting it. Right. I'm going to have to move into my own place. Um, at that time, I was living with my sister, my brother, and my best mate. So there was four of us paying for a three-bedroom uh, house, right, which is just down the road, right, Tarawa Road, um, here in Whangarei. So, and, and it was totally opposite our church, right, where I was a youth worker, and so on. And so, and had been there for five years, and about four of those maybe was like in youth work. And so, yeah, and that was in volunteer capacity, and that was great. Like, I, I really enjoyed that. I think it was great in forming my, you know, so many of my talents, right, really my skill set, so many skill sets where I'm home there. So, um, especially public speaking and stuff really, really got me, you know, there. So, here's, so, so I tell them that I'm shaking. I'm going, hey, Ron, you know, I've been working here for uh, two and a half years, mate. I haven't asked for a raise or anything. I've been on the same freaking amount since I started. And I think I might have asked in my second. Uh, oh, no. I think he raised my... Because um, I went in on a, on a uh, on part of a course. Uh, get get into work. Uh, like, get into full-time work thing, scheme. So it meant that, like, I went there for 20 hours a week. And I was only getting $20 more on my doll. Right? Which was basic. And then my... And the cool thing was my um, my boss's wife, you know, and they probably decided themselves, but my boss's wife saw that, that I was only getting $20, $20 more. And they went, you know, they were basically working with wins to get me to full-time work with a guarantee. And I was doing my course on how to be a salesman. So I was like doing a three-month course on how to be a salesman, on how to approach people. I'd be doing my written courses. I could, and, um, you know, the person would come in and it was on the job training. So there wasn't, you know, I'd done all these other stuff like, um, uh, oh no, that was later. Sorry, that was later. So I'd, I'd basically done all this other stuff later. So at this point, I had like, I had all these other skills that I wasn't able to utilize because there wasn't anything that I could see myself getting involved in. But, I was putting it all into my church at that time, which was really cool. I was able to use my drama skills, my writing skills, making videos, doing stage productions, do, um, learning sound, learning a lighting, and and that's because they believed in what I was what I was about, and that was great. And that's what I mean. I learned so much there, right? And so the whole thing was that I could, um, you know, I could I was able to put the learn new skills and so when i was there i was doing that so um so back to back to the whole uh, work thing so i got look man i'm getting married i need two dollars and so this is a difference things like so you know i knew that i couldn't survive on the ten dollars per hour 44 hour i guess uh, you know 40 plus four, uh, 40 plus 44 you know 84 hours every fortnight wages as a as a single person that was fine man you know I, I i would just go and buy my do whatever i was i was into books i'd buy books and music that was it uh travel yep food yep takeaways all that good now as a single person i had to think about uh you know new bed um you know wardrobes uh fridge freezer i think we had one at that point uh, I think I'd already got another fridge freezer, dryer, washing machine, right? Because of flatting, you got to have that. So all it was like bedding and uh, and a mattress and all that, and a uh, dresser, uh, mirror, and all that. You need bedside cabinets just to make your bedroom, which is kind of like a, it's kind of like a second domain in a marriage. 
as well as a lounge and kitchen and stuff. But ca kitchen's already there, right? You got all the cabinets and stuff. So we had a quite a flash place. I mean, apartment, two bedroom apartment, pretty cool. Uh, anyway, so I get, and he turns around, looks at me, and he goes, "Let me think about it." So I go back out, and I'm like, you know, my shaking's over, and I go back to work, and I mean, I go back. In, to the front because it was office was you know the back office side office actually and so i go back to the uh on stage and um yeah everything's cool i mean onto the front desk and everything's cool carry on that he comes back out later goes here's your out um worked it out see this is a thing about um small businesses that a lot of people don't understand he's doing his own accounts He's got an office lady who does the accounts, but he's the, he's got to look at everything. He's got to look at it. Um, how, how 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 can he afford to? Where does my wages come from? So. You know, I've been I've been a good earner, right? And this and people would come in just for me, knowing that I was there, and that word of mouth got around, and people go, "Hey, is Aru here?" Yeah. And so on. And um, so I got it. So people would come into me. And I know that because people would come and tell me that someone so told me. Someone said, guys, can you come and give me a hand? And um, because that was just me and, my, and, and the boss's wife. And then the part-timer, the office lady who would come in. Who was you know, part of the family. Uh, cousin, you know, so on. Uh, and the business, right? The reason I'm smiling is because of family, business, cousin. I just remember the... The wife was Maori, and the husband was Kiwi European, and so it was just this this amazing. Uh, and that's why I loved, and that's why I stayed there for so long, where I could have moved on. But there were such a such, such a cool people, and you know, like I said, she'd give me an extra twenty bucks every week, just so I could go and buy my food, lunch, and you know, um, down the shop, yeah, you know, just down the road. And so I could go spend, you know, every week I have 20 bucks in my pocket and it would be like so cool because it meant that I was appreciated even though they didn't have to. And so that that's something I learned. Okay, so, so back to the whole small business thing. So the whole thing about the small business thing is like, when, and this is a mum and pop, sh ex ex exactly a mum and pop shop. There's mum and there's dad. Right, right. They have don't. They don't have any kids of their own. Right. Sadly, um, so I. I think, um, if I remember right, that a couple months later she passed. She had diabetes, really bad diabetes. And she passed away in her sleep. And I. Um, somebody told me a couple of years ago, uh, that knew them that like he, Ron had passed as well, and that was sad because I never got to see them because I moved away for, and I was away for 10, 15 years, and. And that was really sad and because they were really good people and and i never hated them for not um having to make me redundant at the end of that because it just got to a point that people who you know the big box that they're in line with wasn't helping them succeed and earn more money for themselves for what they're doing so the big box decided that they were going to get rid of it because it was part of the franchise going to get rid of the franchise and set up a shop down the road from them like just boom stone's throw and i really mean stone's throw um, you know, and so it got to a point where they couldn't even afford, afford paying me to work. And so I was made redundant within seven months of being married, which was hard. And I learned straight away that as much as you might like and appreciate people and how much they, well they treat you, you cannot be loyal to a business, which is sad, really sad because they were mistreated themselves. And so they were treated, ill treated themselves, I guess. And then in return i lost my job and this is how it works right um and I, that's why i have such an affinity 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 to uh to small businesses as a small business owner myself so the whole thing is that um you know um he had to do, go down and go through his accounts and say okay this is how much i can afford to pay you but two dollars more an hour right and i was like fine that's cool that's cool but that was fine for the, for the next five seven months right 
and then it wasn't fine because I didn't have a job and so for almost if I remember I think an entire year I struggled trying to I was everywhere looking for a job trying to provide and of course I couldn't I'd I couldn't go and work in the same um, business because I just felt such you know because I love them so much like they were great people and I didn't want to go to the competitor because then that'll you know I'd be tearing away um, customers from them but then again they'd get they would lost customers anyway by, by, by me not being there and so after a while I mean they ended up selling the front, um, the shop themselves and now it's called Tile Depot right so went from Tile Warehouse Northland's Tile Warehouse to Northland Ceramics to Tile Depot within like about a year and I was just so sad but anyway so um, so I watched that. I learned that really early on how um, how big business treats smaller businesses, how it it actually hurts the you know the working person, and why I'm really always you know going. You can't put so much pressure on the small business, and you can't treat um, you know, and then you can't blame them for not being able to pay the workers that much money, right? And this is just like 1996, no. About 2000 is when I, you know, when I got married, I think it was at that point. Um, so I'm not married anymore. I haven't been for over a decade now. Actually 12 years. Yeah, something like that. Um, and so, you know, and that's the other thing. Like, when you when you have an early uh, stress on your marriage, like in the first year or so, of especially financial, your 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 uh, ego as a man is damaged harshly and not only that then you have if you have a partner who doesn't understand or a wife who doesn't understand what it's like because she hasn't come from a fan um, like she doesn't understand the role of a of a husband or role of a male in the marriage that also can put more, even more pressure and I'm not saying you know it's this and that I'm just saying what it is you know what I see it as and what I in my opinion right and a lot of people might agree or disagree that's okay so and I've and, I've, and I thought like okay so if that is the if that is the situation then if I'm here trying my I'm busting my butt looking for work trying to get into I did courses I think I did two small business courses which now you know in the last three years actually no in the few years of my life in the last 10 years have come in very handy like I've done several of the small business courses and now I've got well to understand how these things you know how to run a business and so at the end of it all you know when you've got that sort of pressure you got the outside pressure out there you got the mental pressure of like how do I work this shit out and then you've got the home pressure of the you know of you know of the spouse not understanding how much stress you're under because she doesn't understand what's inside you and you don't know how to tell her because she doesn't she's not gonna she's you know she's not gonna get what why the male thinks like this why he feels so dejected because he can't provide the one thing he's supposed to do the one role he can do and it should be doing or whatever the yeah, you know. and so, and in our case it was very different because it was like a she was new to the country, uh, she didn't have the same skills that she used to have, uh, and you know so many different things like that were against her, and her learning. So, uh, you know the struggle was you know was real, as they say, but yeah. Anyway, so there was that. So there's an outside pressure of out there people saying oh, you should be providing internal turmoil pressure of saying i should be providing and the you know the home pressure of saying from a partner saying you should be providing so it's yeah so it's kind of hard i think a lot of us don't you know a lot of people who haven't been through it don't understand but those who have fully get it and then when they speak out people go oh no you're you're a chauvinist you're you're a toxic male 
your your toxic masculinity, you hate women on this and that. It's not all. It's never been about that. If as far as if you really understand, listen to the people, who's, uh, you know, males who are actually saying it, the older ones, especially who are saying it, and who've been through it, and who uh, you know who talk about it, you hear them saying what they feel and what they think. They're not trying to you know attack. They're not trying to think like I'm talking now. I'm not trying to attack anyone. I don't really care about that. What I'm saying is this is what I felt. And what it was and why I feel that a lot of times um, you know we have such a damaged uh, um, level of males in our society um, no excuses not trying to make, but I'm just saying right no and a lot of times it's because they don't have a dad in the home uh, or a dad that's neglectful who's in the home or there's a mum who's you know uh, is there doing what my what I felt what I felt I'm not saying it was happening what I felt was happening was like degrading the male of uh, the father in the house so the kids look and go oh this is what is this I is this what a dad's supposed to be like oh, I don't want that you know or or where the mum takes a role because the dad is neglectful right or the or the man becomes uh, has got trauma from the past and is aggressive and doesn't know how to deal with it, needs therapy, doesn't get it, or where uh, he's himself hasn't hasn't got enough male role models to actually say, this is how I should be look, looking after my kids, or how I should be raising them. And then there were, and then there was, and then there was their loving parents, loving um, homes, and then where you know there's a breakup for whatever reason, there's cheating, uh, there is you know. Um, you know somebody else is coming and saying leave the man he's not good for you and all that or the other way leave the leave the chick he's not good for you and i've been in that situation myself where i've said to my mates i said dude that chick isn't good for you yet they've been able to work it out but sometimes you do need that other guy to say that's not good for you then you have to come in your hand and go actually let me really think about it what is she good for all right this 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 and you go well i'm okay with that you know and this is the thing so like you need people to be around you that can that actually don't agree with you or and those that agree with you are there to comfort you or not even comfort you just to be there to say pull your head in as i like to say and to just you know say hey you know this is um this is what needs to be done and not think about like um you know there is no easy streets in this in this life right there's no sort of easy way to to get through things there's no easy um i'll just bring this down my legs are getting a bit sore sometimes i like to stand up and talk and most of the times i sit down but i still have to stand up sometimes i do this in my meetings as well so right so there's so there's this thing right so and the hard thing and the reality of the matter is this women always have their female friends around yet when the male in the relationship has their male friends around women the female uh, partner shows becomes kind of jealous or especially if she is not um, you know, if she's not um, adjusted, well adjusted in her own self, like, I mean, even if the male's not adjusted himself, so there's blames on both sides I'm talking about here, I'm not trying to one side this shit, um, so if, if, the, if the male, you know, is, so the female sees the male with all his mates playing around, going out every weekend, you know, say going out for Saturday, for golfing, whatever, he goes, well, why don't you spend that time with me, it's like, I'm with you every night. I can give you my Saturday or my Sunday. You know, tell me when. But it's like, no, nah, I need you when I need you. And it's like, we don't work that way mentally. Males don't, we comp, comp, compartmentalize. Yep, comp, compartmentalize or compartmentalize. Anyway, so, you know, we have, we put things in boxes. This day we do this, this day we do that, this day we do that, 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 that. And I think, well, that is what I do anyway. So, and I've seen a lot of people do that as well. Males do that as well. It's like, I will go to work for five days. I will come home, 
take my shoes off, put my feet up, have a beer, and, um, you know, and then I'll go do some work because I need to just, and there's a thing about males as well. There's the, um, what is that, decommissioning or something where you, uh, de something uh, where, where you just like basically take the blanket off the day off you as, as a worker and you think about what crap you went through that day and you just wait for that hour. All you need is an hour, right? Maximum an hour. A man needs a maximum, male needs a maximum of one hour to get over the horrible or the good or whatever experiences he's had of that day. Just that eight hour day he's spent at work. And it can be, you know, sometimes you can have horrible, um, you know, people you work with or people who are there uh, that you have to deal with, you know, customers and stuff, depending on the job, right? And so that, um, you just need dethrone, disrobing, dethroning, whatever, right? Uh, disrobing of that day. And that's that, that half an hour to an hour is magic. It's a magic hour for males. Especially, all you got to think about is like, okay, I'm just going to, you know, de de-stress. That's the word, right? I had all these other words and then that's the word I was looking for. Distress, de-stress from the day, right? Just calm down. You know, people think it's like it's it's like meditating. You just sit there, cabbage out for an hour, half an hour to an hour in front of the TV. You're not actually watching anything. You probably put on some comedy, whatever. You're not actually doing anything. You're just letting your brain just de-stress. And the last thing you want is somebody coming up again. What do you think about? You know, what's this? What are you doing? Should be out doing this. Do that. Hey, just give me give me half an hour and I'll be fine. And I found that that's what I needed anyway for you know days of stress. When you like, especially in sales, if you're like um you know if you if you're like basically having to deal with about twenty odd people throughout the day and not even that maybe more or or you deal with one person for an hour or half an hour. It can be very stressful because you gotta you're trying to remember a whole lot of things. I remember when I well, first week first month on the job, I gave all the wrong information and could have been fired on the spot. Um, because I, I actually cost the person like a lot of money. Uh, and it was like a, I um you know, is it he worked for himself, so it was money out of his pocket and so my boss had to fix that and say, Hey look, we'll sort it out. And he didn't, my boss didn't even tell me off. He just said, this is the one you got to do, not that one. I said, sweet. And he explained to the guy, he's a new worker. We're just training him now. And it was cool. And after that, I learned. And I learned to pay attention to what I was doing. Because I'll realize straight away that I, you know, not thinking about what's happening was costing my, my, my boss money. It was costing the customer money. Anyway, so... That sort of stress, you know, you got to go home and just go. Because ah. when you're on the job, you're on the job, right? You're not if if you're if you're on the job and you're screwing around, wasting time on the phone and stuff. That's not that's wasting the time of someone who is paying you to be there. And I think that's just you know being negligent and neglectful of somebody else's money. And especially now, money is so hard for people to gain and stuff. And I think it's just. It's not cool. Anyway, so, um, yeah, so that the stress time is needed and it's very important. So I think, um, you know, it's something that's different because, I mean, you know, females kind of like they're the stress is basically getting on the phone with their female friends and going yada, 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 uh, you know, and they can talk for hours and it's cool, but all the male needs is a half an hour to himself or go over just a book and just drown himself in a book, or TV, whatever. Or even just on social media, whatever. Just get rid of their brain off the work. Because if if you don't, it builds up. That stress builds up and builds up and builds up. And you know, one day out of the blue, it's going to blat out. And you go, that's, that's when horrible things happen. That's when toxicity actually happens. It's when there's all the stress built up and there's no way of getting it out. And that's why I think that the guys need mates to just, chat to to get it out and about and i don't know how i got into this talk 
but it's just like I said, like we we males behave behave in a different way. I mean, I'm 49, and I learned that in my 30s. You know, like I think I. It's it's when I came to a realization. I think it was probably when I was waiting for Sally's, that. My relationship with my dad is very important. I may not, um, you know, agree with everything, but I can appreciate him as my dad, right? And that was it. My brain just went, okay, you just have to have more empathy for the kid, right? You're expecting everybody to have empathy for you, but you're not having empathy for everybody else. And so that's, that's one of the things, and I think that's a very important thing to have, especially whatever situation doesn't matter if you have a good dad or a bad dad or whatever whatever the levels are you gotta say to yourself i'm okay with this whatever's happened I, i'm i myself will forgive and i won't i don't need to forget i just forgive it's the first thing i acknowledge that i'm not perfect either and nobody's perfect otherwise we'd be god right so let's just forget that and so that's a amazing hurdle to get over when you're uh, you know when you're growing up and when you come into adulthood you just realize that hey it's good to learn early but it took me what 15 odd years <laughs> to learn that I've actually maybe more I probably learned it took me 30 years to learn that I think I was about 37 at that time or something or was it 27 it might have been 27 so 20 odd years and I think um the other thing is that it taught me gentleness as well I think there's something that that, that comes with realizing that only you are responsible for your actions and nobody else and i think it's only you that can change your world and by changing your perspective you can change your outlook and you're the only one who can nobody else can do it for you like i mean seriously you know you can you can go well it's there for it's there for it's by there because that's why i'm in that the situation you know and i've done that all right even this week, I have to realize, dude, you know, uh, it's, it's not always about everybody else. It's about you who, who could be the problem <laughs> in the situation. So I think, um, you know, I, I think when I realized that, I was like, a whole weight lifted and I was able to acknowledge my place in that problem, in that situation, my um you know, the way I behaved, and I acknowledged that I actually was at fault. And so I was able to then be a better person realizing what I had to do. And yeah, so I'm just going to leave that at that. Like, so, I mean, you can't, you can't change the world without changing yourself first, right? It doesn't matter what the fuck you want to do in life, but you can't change the world unless you change your own outlook and your own behaviors and i used to spend like oh, sorry i used to spend like like when i moved into this place must have been about this april about four years ago i was so depressed i just, sorry i wasn't depressed i was like lonely as hell i just come out of being around you know a whole family a solo mom with a kind of like a living you know, dude, and so with Solomon with two kids, and there was always always kids in the house. There was teenagers in the house, and all that. There's always noise, and then I moved into here. There was no noise, because there's all you know around me. There are only um, adults. It's you know, and single adults at that, and so there wasn't like noise and stuff except for I think there was like a, a family island of family that was next door with a young baby, mum. Uh, mum and her parents anyway but they were there for like six months and then we moved out i think they had to go back to the islands or something like that or went to Dorpen. anyway so it's very quiet here so and i you know my sister said to me you know i said man can i come over or can you come over because you know it's like so quiet like i'm really lonely and stuff she said look you need to deal with this shit, you know, um, and you need to figure out 
what makes you happy and what you know what you want to do and and I realized that doing art made me happy and listening to music made me happy and so those are two things I you know I um and, and you know and talking to people and so I ended up uh, within months I was on a radio I was doing I was throwing my hand at stand up I was doing theater sports but I found that I was I enjoyed being on the radio because I had done it before and I also enjoyed doing art so I started doing art and then within you know within weeks I was like setting up the business for plunge and um, which which what became plunge which started out as trying to do um, a convention and now it's going into being magazine and you know and well slowly getting to a magazine digital at the moment but print so far and next year hopefully we'll actually have a print so um you know and so i had to deal with like i said you can't change anything until you think and then i think having that realization brought on you know given to me is that what makes me happy nobody can make me happy Nothing else can make me happy and nothing else can make you happy until you realize yourself what's going to make you happy and you got to you know you got to look back on your skills what made you gave you joy in that moment I realized I like I like doing art I like you know drawing you know like telling stories so I got back into it and so we built you know that's how we built plunge enterprises and um, so on so anyway so there's that um, I got a I was supposed to do this video as a cutting of um, <laughs> cutting of a 90 second um, promo, but I'll leave it at that. I don't know how I got there. I'll edit it a bit so we actually only have this part uh, about me talking about me and about this. So hopefully you enjoyed this. Um, yeah, like, subscribe, as I say, and share. I mean, you know, it's just me giving my opinion. You, you can think of it, you know, think of it what it is it's just me doing you know giving my opinion and you can give your opinion in the comments kakiteano wherever you are be safe be well